All right, welcome to day two, and we're going to tackle some function notation today. Last night we introduced what a function was. We got introduced a lot of vocabulary, input versus output variable, independent versus dependent, and we introduced you to our favorite test of all time, the vertical line test. Um, so today I think it's going to be even a little friendlier. It's just going to get used to some notation, as the title implies here today. And... Um, our little diagram here kind of says it all. So this is one of the key things I think we'll put in our notebook. Uh, the output variable is, of course, your y. Um, we've got our rule here, the f of whatever. And um, in the input is, of course, the x. So I think the input and output we're comfortable with. Now, I want to talk about how we pronounce this little equation here. We would say y equals f of x. Okay, emphasis on the word of there. That's going to be a huge thing this year when we get into crazier functions like our trig functions or our natural log functions and, and so forth and so forth. But um, basically what's going to happen here today is I may say something like, and of course we could turn this around. We certainly could say f of x equals y. It doesn't matter whether we put y on the left or the right. So for instance, if I said f of 2 equals 6, what I'm saying is that 2 is the x value, 6 is the y value, and it's equivalent to an ordered pair of 2 comma 6. All right? Now it doesn't always have to use an f. Sometimes we'll use a g. We might even say you know, g of 5 equals negative 1. What that's saying is that's equivalent to an ordered pair of 5 comma negative 1. So you're more comfortable with the ordered pairs. We're going to get you more comfortable with this type of notation going forward into our higher levels of math. So our first task is to just practice evaluating. Um, what we've got up here at the top is you know, the function or the rule f of x equals 5x minus 2. In the old days, we would have just wrote y equals 5x minus 2. And you're probably scratching your head wondering, why can't we do it that way? I'm already comfortable with that. Um, and you just one of those things, you know, going forward, you're just going to have to kind of trust us that this is going to be the better way to write it going forward. So basically, we're replacing the y with this f of x notation. In other words, y is the same thing as f of x. They're interchangeable. They're one and the same. Now, when they say f of 3... 3 is an x value. And what we're going to do here is we're going to substitute a 3 in for every x that we see. So I would simply say 5 times 3 minus 2. And then I got a final answer of, what would that be, 13, I hope? 15 minus 2 is 13. All right. Now in the second example, we're going to start all over. We're going to substitute a negative 2. I'm just going to write this out so we're all on the same page. In for x. And so it's going to be 5 times negative 2 minus 2. That's going to be negative 10 minus 2, and that's going to give me an answer of negative 12 by the time I subtract those. So let's practice some more. Okay, I've got a new function here called g of x, and we've defined it as x squared plus 4. And again, in the old days, we would have said y equals x squared plus 4, and we're just getting used to replacing the y with something like f of x or g of x. The first one, g of 3, again, that's an x value, so we're going to substitute a 3 in for every single x that we see. So we've got an x right there. I'm going to say 3 squared plus 4. In other words, 9 plus 4 is 13. I'm going to start all over. This time they want me to substitute a 0 for x, and it's going to be 0 squared plus 4. Of course, 0 squared is still 0. We'll add the 4 and get 4. Here's a great example, and this is one of the neat things about the flipped classroom is if you're ready to try one on your own, this is a great time to do it. Just hit the pause button, block my voice out, and just try these next two problems all on your own. See if you can evaluate h of 3. See if you can evaluate h of negative 2 all on your own. And then you can come back and hit the play button and see if it's the same thing that I got. And then you can feel really, really confident going into class tomorrow. So anyway, here's my work. Um, here's a new function defined as h of x. In the old days, we would have said y equals 2 to the x, but we're not going to write the y anymore. h of 3. So we're going to substitute a 3 in for the x. 2 raised to the third power. That's really 2 times 2 times 2. And I got an answer of 8. Um, now we're going to substitute a negative 2. 2 to the negative 2. All right, we're going to have to go back to Algebra 1 and review how to handle that negative exponent. We're going to rewrite it as a fraction, and once we do so, the exponent's now positive. And, of course, now I've got 1 fourth is my answer. All right, our next problem and slightly involves a, a word problem, but more importantly, it's a table of values instead of an equation. The last three examples, we were working with an equation. Now we're going to work with a table of values. And then in our next example, we'll work with a graph. And those are the three main types of uh, ways we're going to see a function. Okay, 
Um, so if you don't like, uh, if you want to just read this to yourself, you can again hit the pause button, block my voice out, but basically it says that uh, boiling water is at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, it's left in a room that's at 65 degrees Fahrenheit and begins to cool. Temperature readings are taken each hour and are given in the table below. So basically you can imagine you've heated up this um, bowl of a uh, pot of water, it's uh, 212 degrees, and then you simply, you turn the heat off and you walk out of the room, you leave it. And every hour you walk back into the room and you remeasure the temperature, and you notice that the temperatures are certainly decreasing as the water begins to cool and eventually reach room temperature eight hours later. Um, what we've got here in the top row, I want you to think of the top row as your inputs, and I want you to think of the bottom row as your outputs. And notice they're using capital T as my function, um, so instead of saying something like, you know, maybe f of x, like we did earlier, they're now saying capital T of h. Notice whatever's inside the parentheses is your independent variable. Whatever's on the outside is usually your dependent variable. It represents your y. So when they said t of 2 here, what they're really saying is that 2 is an independent variable, or my x or my h in this case. So I'm going to go right here. The And yes, the corresponding output was 104. So I would say T of 2 equals 104. And then to do the second one here, they want to know what's T of 6. Again, they're thinking 6 is the independent variable, so I'm going to find 6 in that first row. And the corresponding output is 68. So six hours after we started letting it cool, it's down to a temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, let's see, part B. Part A is all done. We'll check that off. Part B, for what value of H is T of H equal to 76? Now, you notice 76 here is not your input, but that's your output. So I'm going to go, I'm going to start in the second row. I'm going to find my 76 and then work up, and the corresponding H value is 4 hours. So 4 hours later, it's 76 degrees. All right, uh, let's see, part C now. Okay, uh, between which two consecutive hours would T of H equal 100? Now again, 100 is an output. And what you'll notice is as I scan the second row, there are no 100s in this row. So I'm going to kind of have to just guess. I would say the 100 would fall right around there, somewhere between the 104 and the 85. So I'm going to say uh, between which two consecutive hours, it would be somewhere between 2 and 3. Somewhere between 2 and 3. Hours, you know, approximately maybe two hours and 15 minutes, maybe two hours and you know, 10 minutes, somewhere around there, it would drop down to a temperature of 100. I don't know what it is, and I guess this just proves what a nerd I am, but I love working with graphs. I think they're, they're fairly straightforward once you practice and get a hang of them and so forth. So we'll continue to talk about who's my input and who's my output, and we'll follow these along on the graph. So for this first one here, we've got an input of negative 1. So let's say when the x-coordinate is negative 1, the y-coordinate is 0. So I would simply say that f of negative 1 equals 0. All right, let's try another one here. Um, what happens if the input's a 1? All right, when the x-coordinate is 1, I want you to go up until you hit the graph. And once you hit the graph right there, ask yourself, what is the corresponding y-coordinate at that moment? And I would say the y-coordinate's a 4. So I'm going to say f of 1 equals 4. All right. And then the last one, we'll start all over, and they want an input of 5. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, go down until you hit the graph. And right there at that moment, the corresponding y-coordinate is negative 4. So I would simply say that f of 5 equals negative 4. And that's how you read a graph. Inputs are x, outputs are y. All right, part b. So we can check off part a. Part b here. Evaluate f of 0. So same thing here. When x is 0, go up until you hit the graph, and we've got a corresponding y-coordinate of 3. So I'm going to say f of 0 equals 3. And then they want to know what special feature the graph does f of 0 correspond to. You'll notice that moment right there is something really special. That is your y-intercept. In other words, to kind of summarize that, anytime your um, x value is 0, anytime your input is 0, you're automatically finding the y-intercept every single time. All right, check that bar off. Let's go get c. What values of x solve the equation f of x equals 0? Now here's what I want you to say. Make a note in your notebook that 0 is the output, okay? In other words, that's your y value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line where I think y of 0 is, right on the x-axis. Label that, y equals 0. 
how many solutions are there. Remember in the last video we said that equal sign, whenever you see the equal sign you're looking for intersection points. Again, there's three different intersection points. The first intersection point is at x equals negative 1. The second intersection point is at x equals 3, I believe, if I'm reading that correctly. And then the last one, 4, 5, 6, it looks like that last one's at 7. So there's three solutions, one at negative 1, one at 3, and one at 7. What special features on the graph does that correspond to? And that, of course, is your x-intercepts. All right. So in other words, anytime your output is a zero, you're actually finding x-intercepts. And last but not least, between which two consecutive integers does the largest solution to f of x equals 3 lie? Again, the 3 is your output. Okay. Oh my goodness gracious, my handwriting has really gone down the tubes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to y equals 3. I'm going to draw a horizontal line here at y equals 3. What you'll notice is there's uh, three different solutions. They actually didn't want all three. They just wanted the largest one of those solutions. I would say the largest one is over here. It falls somewhere between 7 and 8. It looks like it's maybe like 7.6-ish. And so between which two consecutive integers, I would say somewhere between 7 and 8. Okay, our last question for the night is a very simple and straightforward one. It's just getting used to our notation. And they said for a particular function defined as y equals g of x, it is known that g of negative 2 equals 7. So here's just a quick recap, and I think we showed this on the very first slide of the video. Whatever is inside those parentheses is your input, and of course that represents your x-coordinate. Whatever is on the outside is your output, and that of course represents your y-coordinate. So negative 2 comma 7 right there is your winner winner chicken dinner. So I hope that helps. We looked at equations, we looked at table values, and we looked at graphs. Um, be interested to know which ones you feel more comfortable with and then which ones you strongly dislike. We'll go over that in class, we'll team up, we'll work together, and we'll battle through our next assignment. Good luck.